So I've been thinking about what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, this is weekly vlog number three, I do believe. I have done some other ones, specifically just for Patreons, patrons on Patreon. Um, I also know that I need to do a new Patreon introduction video, and I'm intending to do that soon. But I thought I'd continue with the theme of doing a weekly vlog, and this time talk about something that I make, and that would be corsets. Um, if anyone knows me and has known me for quite a while, you'll probably know that corsets are quite dear to my heart. If it wasn't for corsets, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. Uh, basically, uh, I got into this fashion business by modelling for a designer called Velda Lauder, uh, who made a lot of corsets and I cut my teeth in this fashion industry thing by first of all modelling her corsets and then cutting her corsets in the back room studio of her design company. So I had never done anything to do with clothes before, not commercially anyway, so I was plucked out of the modelling scene and plonked straight, straight in to the deep end which is quite often what I do with my interns, although they're normally fashion interns, so they've had fashion experience. But no, Velda kind of saw that I wasn't that good at selling her corsets. So she took me out of the shop and put me in the workshop and got me cutting corsets, leather ones, as it was back then. Leather, PVC, glitter. There were many a times when I'd come back from her studio. She was North London, I was South London. And I'd have glitter dotted around my face because the glitter corset, she'd kind of be cutting and then you'd wipe your brow, wipe the sweat from your brow and you'd end up with glitter all over your face. So there was me, punk, Mohican, glitter, lovely. Um, so yeah, digressing, that's, that's what I used to do. Um, and when Velda was still around, people would sometimes come up to me and say, oh, we like this skirt. Uh, do you do corsets to go with it? And I'd always send them down to Velda's uh, because I knew that her corsets were brilliant uh, because I used to make them. I used to cut them anyway. They were normally sewn by Elaine, who's also my seamstress. So, um, yeah, I'd send people wearing my stuff down to Velda, Velda would send people wearing her stuff up to me. And we kind of had this lovely symbiotic thing where it was cooperative rather than competitive. Um, and I'd never thought about making corsets for Jed Finks of London. When Velda died, however, it took corsets out of my little armoury of places to send people to. I couldn't send them to Velda anymore because she wasn't making corsets anymore. Elaine, however, had a lot of experience in sewing corsets. So, um, it was, I think, 2013, end of 2013, that I started making corsets. And cutting the boning for the first corset that I made felt like I was back home. It felt very comfortable cutting the, cutting the boning cut it exactly the same way that Velda taught me. Um, and Elaine and I kind of chatted about corsets and how to make them and the construction. And I'd, I'd inherited some bits and pieces from Velda. Um, and those ingredients actually go into my corsets. So talking about these, uh, there's, there's a, a whole range of them now. There's ones for women, one for men as well with corset waistcoat panels which was a complete accident. I might talk about that at some point in the future. But these, these beauties, this one's leather. And um, it's leather on the outside and cotton drill on the inside. Lovely lined, lovely lined corset. And there were, there were, there were kind of issues when it comes to normal corsets. First of all, they're, some of them are made in China, which, um, 
is fair enough, you know, if, if you want a corset that's made overseas by people who might not have the passion that other people have, then, you know, can't stop you doing that. It's going to be cheaper for sure. These beauties, there's a lot of love and experience that goes into those, the, into these. One of the things that kind of bugs me about corsets is at the back. There's a lot of strain on the back of a corset. Um, it's holding you in. It's holding your organs in, it's holding your muscles in, it's holding skin in. And uh, eyelets at the back of corsets have, an, have a habit of migrating slightly. Um, so we don't put eyelets in corsets, not these ones anyway, we put D-rings in. And you've got a line stitching here, line stitching there, line stitching here, and another line stitching here. So the chances of that coming out is pretty small. Uh, another thing that we do with our corsets is um, we put something in the front panel and the back panel and also the modesty panel to make it stiffer. And we just feel that this adds a lot more stability to the construction of the corset. Corsets are kind of engineering, really. That's what Velda taught me, was that she didn't really see herself as a fashion designer, more of an engineer when it came to, you know, structured things like corsets. Um, I'm really passionate about these beauties. I think they're ace. <laughs> me and Elaine, between us, have about 35 years of experience when it comes to making corsets. And I think it shows. It's reflected in the price, obviously. These are £275. Um, they're still boned. They're fully lined. They're probably going to outlast the nuclear attack. They are sturdy, beautiful. They smell pretty nice as well. And, um, yeah, everyone that's worn them, everyone that's worn one, has said how comfortable they are. Because... They are designed mainly to go around the waist as opposed to crushing the ribs. Um, they're also cut here so that they generally sit, you know, quite nicely. The, the bit that pulls in is around the waist. You can generally pull in four inches. The more muscly your, your midriff is, the less you're going to pull in. That's something that I've noticed over the years. Um, and yeah, the governess corset is available in either leather or drill with pinstripe frontage. And the fabric ones are a little bit cheaper. They're two, 225, not 275 like the leather ones. And if you've never worn a corset before, if you're male, then the corset with the waistcoat panels will just increase that ability to look like that. Wide shoulders, narrow waist. Uh, for a woman, curvy, like an hourglass, really sexy. So that's my little chat about corsets. Um, I might do other chats like this about other products if you like uh, a bit more of an insight into the process behind the design. If you want an insight into how I came up with the inspiration for the design, then please let me know, comment. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel which is Jed Phoenix of London also become a patron on the Jed Phoenix Patreon page that'd be patreon.com forward slash Jed Phoenix there'll be a whole host of rewards that you can get uh, even if you just give me a pound of, uh, sorry if you give me just a dollar a month that will gain you access to behind the scenes stuff and patron only uh, blog posts a bit like this one but on different subjects and um, yeah a whole load of extra special rewards and the knowledge that you know that you're supporting British made stuff gonna do a blog post about British made stuff at some point as well so watch this space and um, if you haven't already got a corset whether you want a leather one or a fabric one or a different type of corset check out my Etsy shop Jed Phoenix style or yeah check out the website as well because there's stuff on there too. Bye!